Gears and bearings. Let's talk about bearings first. Okay. A bearing is what? It's something that effectively it stops two parts of metal rubbing against each other when there's relative motion between them. Yeah? Um, there's several different types, okay? But there's still the main effect is to separate a shaft or two moving parts and make sure there's a layer of lubricating something, fluid, water, whatever, grease, to make sure that the two metal parts don't actually touch each other. Okay. So then the official one is they provide support for rotating or power transmitting shafts and they permit smooth rotation by minimizing friction which otherwise generates considerable heat and results in power loss. Not just power loss, it results in the two components actually welding themselves together in the worst case. Yeah? So, now, based, depending on the relative motion between these two parts, you have two types. You have what they call plane bearings. Sometimes called sleeve or sliding. Okay? And then you have roller contact bearings. Now, the sliding or sleeve bearing or plane bearings are the sort of thing you get in the bottom end of an engine. It's a shell. It's got a flat surface. Okay? Two parts go around a, a, a shaft to form a circle. Now that bearing surface in there, we force oil into it, and that then is a gap between the actual bearing surface and the shaft around which the oil rotates. Okay, but the bearing itself is plain. The bearing doesn't move. It's just a plain soft surface. Okay? The other one is your standard roller or ball bearings, which you've all seen where the bearings themselves actually roll across the two surfaces. Okay. Most commonly called, funny enough, anti-friction bearings. Because the ball is rolling, it's like a tank tracks where it's going down the road. It lends the track around and puts it on the floor and then picks it up and moves it forward. It's not trying to, to, to move it across the ground. Okay. That's why tanks are very good in awkward situations. So, two different types. Okay. On the sliding bearings, we have metallic, non-metallic types, uh, non-metallic being PTFE type bearings, that sort of stuff. Some form of material that's very slippy and inherently slippy. Okay, metallic are, as I say, the, the car big end shells and the main bearing shells. Okay, um, different types of loads. We get radial loads and axial loads. Okay, in the axial load, the shaft actually moves in and out along the bearing, and the radial load it rotates around inside it. Yeah? Um, then configuration, they can be solid, they can be split. Car ones are mostly split, so you can get into them and take them apart. Okay? And then there's various ways of getting the lubricating fluid into them. All right. We're going to talk about them later. The three main ones are self-lubricating, hydrostatic, and hydrodynamic. Now we'll cover what they mean um, just now. Okay. On the other side, you have your rolling, your ball ones. Now, you've got two circles, one inner race and one outer race. Each one has a track on it. And these little pointies here can be either a ball, a ball, horizontal roller, a tapered roller, or a barrel roller, or a needle, depending on the requirements and the difference in speed between the outer and the races and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. Now this whole picture comes from a guy called Charles. He's a mechanical design um, sector on the, we'll get off on the internet, obviously. Now, <coughs> In a plane bearing, the motion between the shaft and the bearing surface is one of pure sliding. The two surfaces slide past each other. Right? Think of a block put on top of a table and pushed along. That's a plane bearing. Right? If you don't do anything, the block gets hot very quickly and ends up burning the table. We've got to have some sort of um, lubrication in between the two. Yeah? Uh, now, if they were to touch each other, what happens is the various roughness on the, on the shafts would end up forming micro welds and actually welding the shafts together. Okay. Now, the classification for those variants, the type of them, are what they do. 
Okay? They either have a shaft rotating in them, or a shaft moving in and out of them, okay? or they're there to stop the shaft moving in and out. Now think of the front wheel bearings on a motor car, for instance. Yeah? So you've got journal or radio bearings. If you like, journal bearings are the one that, that's typically what we call a car bearing, a car engine bearing, journal bearings. Okay? Otherwise, they can be called radio bearings. And then they have axial nodes. That's where the axis tries to move horizontally. Like here, see. As you turn the wheel, the force on here tries to pull the wheel off, pull the wheel off, or push it on. The corner forces. So these tapered bearings are designed to stop that. Yeah? That one's fixed to the outside, and on the inside there, it's tapered. So if the shaft tries to go that way, that taper tends to prevent the shaft from moving. And vice versa, on this side, going the other way. Yeah? So the thrust load, if you look at this little guy here, the thrust load is downwards, but the bearings themselves are rotating. So this would be great at parties, because it keeps you on your seat when you've got a couple of drinks. Yeah? There's a typical journal bearing. This is a split journal bearing, because the two bolts that hold this top cap on. That comes off to allow you to change the bearings and to fit the shaft into it. Okay, so rotating shaft, shaft is fitted into here, the bearings are clamped up, fluid is applied through the hole, and, and the shaft can begin to rotate. Okay? This type of shaft is consistent here, it's called a plumber block. Okay? Now, I can do that. There's the block itself, that's fixed. This bit here. This bit is the bearing surface, the bush, and then the half diagram there is the shaft itself. Okay, now you can see obviously we have to then force oil into that gap there to make it work. Yeah? The only problem with this one is see it's not split. So the only way you're going to get the shaft in is to push it in from the end. Right, with a split one, you can lay the shaft in place and then bolt the cap on and keep it there. So the big disadvantage with, with bush bearings is that the shaft has to be put in from the end. There's no problem, Steve. You didn't miss much. Okay. Right. Now, operation. Two things are vital to standard sleeve bearings, or journal bearings, okay? How fast the shaft turns, and how much oil pressure we've got in there, right? Or how much bearing pressure there is pushing the two surfaces together, in which case we need the oil pressure to keep the two apart, okay? So the faster the rotating shaft, and the more force there is pushing the two parts together, the higher the oil pressure we need to keep the two apart. Okay? Now, that means we've got bearing pressure and velocity. So therefore the product of those two is called what? The PV value. Right? And that's the measure of the frictional heat generated on a unit area of the bearing surface. Right? And it is directly proportional. The severity of the bearing surface increases with that number. So the shaft diameter gets bigger, the load gets bigger, or the RPM goes up, that PV value goes up, and the, the, the severity of the potential for friction goes up correspondingly. Yeah. Now, one of the metals we use is straightforward copper or copper alloys, right? brass, bronze, that sort of stuff. A lot of the, uh, the ships and boats have got bronze bearings in them, because they, they handle the salt water nicely as well. Okay? Brass and bronze provide higher load capacities and wear resistance than what's called a babbit. Babbit metal is an alloy that's made up from predominantly the softer metals. Okay? And then coated onto a shell. So when, if you look at a car main bearing, one half of it, the actual shell of the bearing is made from quite a hard metal, and then it's got a coating of a babbit material on it, 
which is a very soft material, but pressure volume, uh, pressure velocity, Dave. Sorry. Right. Remember we said that the, the we just go back there. We have the two things that are important for it is the surface velocity of the rotating shaft and the bearing pressure. Now obviously the velocity of the rotating shaft is going to de depend on what? The diameter of the shaft and the RPM. Right? And then the pressure is the load applied to it, how much weight or how much force is applied to try and force the two sides together. Hence, as we say, the, the rotating speed, the shaft diameter and the pressure of the load applied are the three factors that will dictate the bearing stress. Okay, so a bad material is a, it's a, it's an alloy of it's a several different versions of it, but they're all called babbits, and typically they're used to line bearings. Okay, they're a soft material, but they do hold oil well, and they make themselves very pliable to allow the oil to get in and to have a low friction surface. Okay. Um, copper and brass are good, however, they're a bit brittle, but they do score. Right? Aluminium bronze are probably the hardest of the lot. So when we have very heavy bearing loads, we tend to use copper bearing alloys. Smaller ones, we use bronze. And then less loads, we'll use the babbits. Okay. So, let's look at the calculation. I would imagine because we're doing this, it's going to be in your, in your assessment. We have a shaft with a 25 millimeter diameter. And a shaft speed of 1500 RPM. So to determine the PVR value in order to select a bearing, we need to know that well, we've got the bearing length and we've got the load. So from that, we should be able to calculate the PV value and then decide what type of material we're going to use. Uh -huh. So the loading, right? The load is a mass supported per bearing times gravity. 9.8. That gives us a newton. Okay. We have a shaft diameter in millimeters and the bearing left length in millimeters. Okay. Now this one is surface speed. Okay. Equals the reps per minute times the circumference of the shaft. Right. 3.14 is pi times d. Take the circumference of the shaft, multiply it by the rest per minute, and you get the velocity of the, the two metals are in relation to each other. Yeah. So let's have a look at this now. We know the load is 40 kilograms. 40 times 9.8. The shaft diameter is what? 0.025, because it's 25 millimeters. You know, we've got to keep this in meters, and it's 300 RPM, uh, 30 millimeters, sorry. So you've got 0.025 and 0.03 multiplied together. That gives us 522,000 PA, or 0.5 megapascals. That's a loading figure for that bearing. So that then we can go to the tables and decide which metal we want to use on it. Yeah. So, we've got the surface speed, the velocity, is what? 300 RPM times pi times the diameter is 23.56 meters per second. Okay. So, what do we do with that? Work out 12 here. It's 12 millipascals, megapascals, times per meter per minute, per millimeter per minute, sorry, that's the small one. Okay. So that's your PV bearing, a figure. Okay. If we have a look at our box, PV less than 5, less than 10, less than 20, 40, 200. What was ours? It was 12 mega. 
So we are above this. So the bearing must be a mass in water. Oh no, sorry. This isn't making parcels. Sorry, I thought it was in parcels. So we're sat here between the two. So obviously we take the top one. Regular lubrication would be required for this. 